For Crema Media's Polity, I'm Sash Newadi. Former Kame CEO Glenn Osmond joins Polity to discuss his book, Crash and Burn, a CEO's crazy adventures in the airline industry. Your book outlines the collapse of Kame in June 2022, during which time you were CEO. Can you briefly give us your history in the aviation space and your entry into Kame? Yeah, I've been involved in um, airline industry since probably around 1990, I'd say, uh, thereabouts. And um, my involvement, if you look at Kame, I had three stints as an executive at Kame, but uh, I also worked at other airlines who so was a strong competitor to Kame. So really, the book's not about me. The book's about what made Kame great and uh, what caused Kame to fail. I'm just merely an observer who observed what made them great when I was competing against them and working for them and also um, what led to their downfall. Now, you liken Kome's history to that of South Africa's. And in the book, you outline Kome's beginnings, its operations through post-war apartheid democracy, state capture, uh, and then during COVID-19. So to what do you attribute Kome's success in the decades prior to 2022? So it had a great success story. It was one of the world's most successful airlines. I think it operated for about 75 years and made profits for 74 of those 75 years. Um, what made it great, it's probably like any other business, it's exceptional management. There were three leaders of the company from early in the 60s, probably up till about 2010. And it was the chairman, the deputy chairman, and the CEO, which was Dave Novick, Martin Morrison, Pete von Werfen. They, they formed a threesome that ran that business on sound principles for probably over 40 years. Um, and that really, really built a solid company as well. So it's all about people. It's the people who managed the business over that period. Now, it was interesting to read that Kome didn't want to grow Kalula for fear of backlash from SAA. Can you tell us more about this? Uh, that's way back, yeah. That's probably um, around about 2000. Um, at the time, SAA was market dominant, probably Kame was small in the market, and there was obviously the fear not to provoke the government, not to provoke SAA in terms of it. So at one stage, the thinking was, well, um, let's not provoke a strong reaction from SAA. But at the right time, Kame made the call that South Africa was ready for a low-cost airline, and they launched Kalula at the time. Now, at one point before your CEO position at Kame, you left the airline and you launched the one-time airline. Can you tell our viewers about your success there and why you eventually resigned? I was financial director at Kame for about, um, I think, seven years. I then left Kame uh, to start a one-time airline. I left on a friendly handshake. Um, I'd seen that there was an opportunity in the market. At the time, SAA was the premium carrier. In the middle, you had Kame, but there was a whole right at the low end of the market. Um, to offer a truly low-cost airline, which South Africa didn't have. I left, left Kame, and uh, we started one time because we saw this opportunity. Um, and we obviously had fierce competition from Kame, and um, I ran it for eight years. We made profits in seven of the eight years, and it changed travel in South Africa. People were flying Joburg, Cape Town, 299, 399. It changed air travel in the country. So it was a huge success story. And when you returned to Kame in 2019 under a joint CEO position, you wrote that it looked like inertia had set in. Can you tell us what you meant? Yes, yeah, so, uh, I think it happened. So if you take Kame, it had been incredibly successful for so many years. Mm, and um, at some point in its growth, it became fat, lazy, and arrogant, really simply uh, stating it simply. And um, one of the main causes of business failure is inertia. So if you look at that period in Kame's history, they weren't growing. They should have dominated the, the African skies, and they weren't. They were shrinking their business into Africa. SAFE was growing at a high speed, eating into the market share. They were doing nothing to oppose SAFE. Um, and it just became really fat and lazy. Now, you returned to Kame in November 2020 <laughs> after an earlier retrenchment, which you say you were accused of orchestrating. Can you briefly outline why you decided to return a third time? Yeah, so um, once I left Comet, went into business rescue. What had happened in business rescue, it really had a choice. Um, either they would have to find a rescue plan, 
to rescue the, the company when it was in business rescue or it would be liquidated. So I worked with a consortium and um, we drew up a rescue plan that was then accepted by all the stakeholders and we actually rescued Comi from liquidation. Um, and I, I was part of that consortium. Now, as an industry insider, can you tell us how the COVID lockdown affected Kome and more broadly the airline industry? Yeah, it was absolute madness what uh, um, happened in terms of the regulations in the airline industry. The first restrictions were in March uh, 2020, which I understand at the time the world knew nothing about COVID. We all lived in fear. How bad would it be? How bad could it be? So I understood the first lockdown, uh, which was in March 20. But the second lockdown made no sense in December when um, they closed the beaches, closed the hotels, but they allowed flying. So, you know, that made no absolute no sense. Then they decided in, I think, February to introduce a curfew, which also made no sense because um, rather than having people traveling throughout the day, you now say this curfew, so you squash all those travelers into a much shorter period of flying, which obviously... Um, makes the spreading of the virus even more likely. So that was absolute madness. The third level of madness was September when they decided that you weren't allowed to fly into Gauteng. So it was fine. You could fly between Durban and Cape Town. The virus was fine, but you couldn't fly to Joburg, uh, which is also madness because there's absolutely no way that the virus knew whether you were flying to Cape Town or to Joburg. The regulations that were imposed on um, the second, third and fourth lockdowns were not based on science. They were knee-jerk reactions. They harmed the country irreparably. They harmed the travel industry, harmed the airline industry. And at the time, it was just total madness. Uh, can you tell us about your encounter with the Civil Aviation Authority, which had granted commerce aircrafts and which you fought against? And tell us why you believe it was a political decision. So what happened, Kome had an engine failure, um, I think in February 2022, and an engine failure is extremely rare. Um, I think on average, I say there's one every 500,000 hours. The problem is a month later, we had a second engine failure. So what happened with the CA is we had these engine failures, um, which shouldn't have happened, which happened, and the CA investigated, um, except they failed to investigate the engine failures. Um, they, they sent a team in for like a day or so, and they had a look at things, and um, they produced no findings on the engine. And the engine type that we had is the same engines that are used by SAFE, by SA, throughout the world. All the world global airlines use this engine type. It's one of the safest engines in the world. What surprised us, though, then is um, without inspecting the engines, without looking at the engines, um, they asked us for a meeting. And prior to telling us what their findings were, they told us that they were grounding us, which obviously was a concern. How do you ground someone without first telling them what the problem is? Um, so they'd taken a preordained decision to ground us. Um, so that obviously raised a lot of suspicions. In fact, even at the meeting, one of the CA inspectors told us that we were top of his hit list, which quite surprised us as well. They then made findings to do with our change management processes. Once again, had absolutely nothing to do with the engines, had nothing to do with how we fly aircraft, how we fix aircraft, had nothing to do with any of those things. Yet on that basis, they took a decision to ground us. Um, at the time, the CAA was under a lot of pressure. Their own aircraft that they operate themselves for airport calibration services had had a crash. There'd been an investigation into their own aircraft that they were responsible for the maintenance and the safe performance, and they failed dismally. Um, the Ethiopian report had listed the litany of issues that they'd failed to do. The aircraft was not safe. The crew were not properly trained, not properly licensed. The aircraft didn't have the correct parts. So my instinct is that somehow they were under pressure. Um, because of the report on their own poor performance. And um, it was probably convenient for them to act against us at the time. Now, in the book, you acknowledge that Kome crashed and burned on your watch. Looking back, what do you believe you could have done differently to save the airline? Yeah, so, you know, when I talk about a crash, a crash always has a root cause. And I think by the time I was there, it was in business rescue, it was already headed towards the crash. And the root cause had been that Comet lost control of costs, it had lost control of cash, 
and had massive debt. And um, by the time we were there um, in the rescue process, I think it was probably already too far down the track in order to save it. Clearly, obviously, I, I made mistakes, which I like to think I've owned up to in the book, uh, particularly that when we did the rescue plan, which was in early 2020, there was no concept of a second, third or fourth COVID wave. It was almost like we in COVID, one will be out of it and life will get back to normal. I don't think anyone had an understanding of how bad COVID would affect the world for years thereafter. So I, th I think that was a mistake. We possibly should have estimated that COVID uh, might have had a second or third or fourth wave. The other mistake was uh, we had excessive debt and uh, we were probably over-optimistic in terms of our ability to pay off that debt. So I like to think I own up to those uh, flaws uh, that we had in the rescue plan that, that we had developed. Lastly, Glenn, what should be done to improve the future of commercial aviation in South Africa? And what future do you see for SAA? Look, if, I, if I take South African aviation, um, the most important factor for to grow is low airfares. Um, if they're low airfares, people will fly and the sector will grow and tourism will grow. So then the next important thing is, well, how do you get low airfares? And the way you get low airfares is through increased competition. Um, the more competition there is, the lower the airfares and the market will grow. Unfortunately, right now, there's not really enough competition because once we exited the market at Kame, we had 40% of the market. And if you take out 40% of the market, obviously, the other airlines just raise airfares. And we've seen that right now. The um, airlines are charging ridiculous airfares. That's squeezing uh, growth and squeezing air travel and hurting tourism. So um, simplistically stated, we need more competition uh, and that'll bring down airfares and, and that'll grow commercial aviation. Uh, for SA, I'm optimistic. I think they've fixed their business. They've reduced their costs. They have a slow and steady growth plan. Um, I think a strong SA is good for South Africa. It's good for South African aviation. And I think SA will succeed. That was former Comme CEO, Glenn Osmond, discussing his book, Crash and Burn, a CEO's crazy adventures in the airline industry.